Formula One continues to be an immensely busy sport with a wealth of new stories breaking every week. The real headliner in recent times, however, was Mario Andretti's attempt at purchasing the Alfa Romero team. Obviously, that didn't happen, as the talks broke down in late October. In today's video, we'll be looking at just what caused the deal to break down, the reason why the timing of the purchase just wasn't right. So don't go anywhere, who is Andretti? Michael Andretti is an American motorsport team owner and also a former driver himself, having enjoyed a career so successful that he has gone down as statistically one of the most successful drivers in the history of American car racing. He has 42 kart race victories, which is the fourth most of all time, and won the 1991 World Series to boot. He's something of racing royalty, in fact, being the son of racing legend and Formula One world champion Mario Andretti. Also, rather unfortunately, he has the distinction of having led the most laps in IndyCar racing without winning the race those laps are a part of, with 431. On the plus side, coming so close only to fall to defeat clearly hasn't broken his spirits, as immediately upon retirement in 2003, he bought into a team owned by his brothers and renamed it Andretti Autosport, leading the team to five Indianapolis 500s and four IndyCar Series championships. By this point, the team now takes part in various forms of racing, such as Formula E, the Supercars Championship, and Extreme E, and Michael Andretti as the sole owner. There's no doubt that Andretti is an icon of racing, and his track record in Autosport ownership would suggest that he knows what he's doing, as he was able to lead the team bought from his brothers to a great level of success in pretty much every competition they take part in. Timeline of events Before we delve into the specifics of the Alfa Romero deal, it is worth noting that Michael Andretti seems to really want an F1 team, as he has made attempts to purchasing two other teams in the past, rebranded to Racing Point and then Ashton Martin, were in the midst of their financial crisis. His bid for them was rejected, but not long after that there was then speculation that he was making attempts to purchase Haas, though this one also went nowhere. Finally, in early October, news broke that Andretti had submitted a credible offer to acquire 80% of his Lero investments, the holding company that owns Alfa Romero. Many believe that the deal was as good as done, that all that remained was the formality of officially concluding the deal and exchanging the ownership. Boy, were these people in incredibly wrong. The speculation suggests that once the talks reached an advanced stage, the two sides could not come to terms, as though Andretti was prepared to pay their asking price to actually purchase the team. Sauber owner Ben Rousing also wanted a guarantee that Andretti would put $50 million a year into the team. With Rousing unwilling to budge on his condition and Andretti unwilling to accept such terms, the deal quickly broke down and it now looks unlikely that they have any chance of being revived. What's been said about the deal? Given what we've just told you, you're probably thinking that money was the ultimate roadblock in the way of this deal getting done. But Michael Michael Andretti himself, it seems, would disagree, as he has addressed his failed attempt at purchasing Alfa Romero quite recently. In the interview, he noted that there are rumors that the deal fell through due to financial reasons, and he wished to make it clear that that couldn't be further from the truth. Instead, Andretti has argued that what killed the deal was an issue of control, with Andretti insisting that essentially what Sauer wanted was for him to purchase Alfa Romero and then not have any real say in its day-to-day -day operation. As you can imagine, this suggestion did not go down well with Andretti, especially given that this is an issue that apparently arose at the 11th hour, which sounds incredible incredibly frustrating. Whether or not this is all true is up to interpretation, but given the rumor that Sauber demanded a specific amount of yearly funding be guaranteed in legal writing, it's not out of the question to believe that this really did come down to an issue of control over the team. Regardless of the frustrations, Andretti has remained optimistic about his chances of acquiring a Formula 1 team in the future, and you'd like to imagine that eventually his persistence will pay off. The American noted that he will only go for a deal that he feels is right, but that he and the rest of Andretti Autosport will always be on the lookout for any opportunity that arises. Now that we've run down everything that's happened with regards to the Andretti Alfa Romero deal that just wasn't to be, let's get into the real crux of why attempting this purchase now was just a case of bad timing from Andretti. But first, in the interest of seeing this from both sides, there are a few reasons why the timing actually looks good. Why the timing was right. To be fair to Andretti, the timing isn't terrible, and there are good arguments for why he would want to get into the F1 ownership circle right this very moment. Formula 1 ratings are on the rise in his American homeland, with the Netflix Drive to Survive series in particular doing a great job of expanding the competition's brand to a larger demographic than ever before. This will likely increase the value of all F1 teams as the year goes on, and sponsorships become even easier to negotiate, while F1's prize structure has also recently changed to make the competition even more lucrative than before. With all these things in mind, now seems like a perfect time to cash in on Formula 1 ownership, right? Why the timing was wrong? Unfortunately, no it isn't. And some of the reasons why right now is a pretty bad time to look at buying yourself a Formula 1 team, I'm sure this advice is relevant to a lot of you, are the same as why it's a good time to be an F1 owner right now. Now. As we've covered the popularity of Drive to Survive and growing mainstream exposure of F1 is leading to all the teams becoming significantly more valuable, so most owners are reluctant to let go of an asset that is rising and could continue to rise in value. Another issue is the anti-dilution fee clause, which demands that any new owner must pay a million dollars directly to their competitor teams. It's essentially a membership fee to join the club of F1 owners. As you can imagine, this rule is incredibly unpopular and is likely to be scrapped in 2025, when the F1 teams renegotiate their deal with the league. With that in mind, the question becomes why why would someone
someone buy a team right this second and when they could wait a few years and avoid a ridiculous payment. Another problem is that there is a big shift in technological regulations underway. With the 2022 F1 season set to see the first cars designed with a new budget cap, making it a nightmare of a time for new management to come in. What's more that there is speculation these new tech regulations will lead to an increase in value for the F1 teams. So yet again, many owners are waiting around to see if the upcoming season will provide a boost to the amount they could net from a sale. Finally, an Alfa Romero specific issue with this deal is that the team is based in Switzerland, a country that employs stringent border control laws, making bringing in staff incredibly difficult, especially since there is little homegrown talent. What's next for Andretti? With all the issues we've just listed, it's no great shock that Andretti's attempt to purchase Alfa Romero broke down. There's just too much uncertainty in the world of F1 right now. This is far from being just an Andretti issue, as the ownership of F1 teams has become a tad more stable with all the newest regulations. Between 2013 and 2020, an average of one team per year either changed ownership or went bust entirely. But 2021 has seen little to no suggestion of either of these things happening to a current F1 team, beside the Andretti links. Regardless, Andretti doesn't seem likely to give up, so it wouldn't be a surprise to see him in the news again at some point. Lewis Hamilton's Miracle To finish up today's video, we've just got to talk about Lewis Hamilton's heroics at the Brazilian Grand Prix. We've discussed the politics of race ownership so much that you could be forgiven for forgetting about the actual racing, but what Hamilton did perhaps goes down as one of the finest drives in F1 history, let alone his personal career. Hamilton suffered through two penalties over the weekend, including a DRS infringement penalty that sent him to the back of the grid in Saturday's sprint qualification. He fought back from 20th to 5th, then had to deal with a 5-place grid penalty for the race proper. Starting in 10th place, he was sent off the track by title rival Max Verstappen, but made a sensational comeback to clinch victory, finishing in 1st place. It's an extraordinary moment in what has been a rather extraordinary career, and it closes the gap between Hamilton and his rival heading into the final few races. And that's everything. What do you think of Hamilton's amazing comeback? Do you think Andretti will ever manage to actually purchase a team? Let us know in the comments, and until next time, we'll see you soon.